What's going on world? It's another episode of Sneak Peek there on your screen. I'm your host George Kill. Glad you tuned in. After kicking off season six, also known as the specifics with a visit to the Perfect Paris collection in episode zero, we officially begin the new season, this time purely of themed and focused collections with Adidas global director, John Wexler. The Portland native recently invited us to his office on the Adidas campus in Rip City to check out his collection of samples, autograph gems, and more, all while providing us with a history lesson of three stripes. All right, Night Six fam, I'm in Portland, Oregon with the Adidas Global Director, John Wexler. What's, What's up, going man? on, man? How are you? Nice to meet again. Thanks for coming through. Yeah, definitely. So tell us, where are we? Uh, right now we're in Portland, Oregon at the Adidas Global North America headquarters. And um, this is the office where most of our product marketing, design, um, sales, retail, operations all sit. Right, so we're going to get a little tour of the place, but also get a sneak peek inside your collection. Yeah, so back when I started in the brand in 2000, I was working in footwear and uh, worked in both basketball and in originals. And so I brought in a bunch of products that uh, I've had in my hands since then and then some of the newer stuff. So you'll see a mixture of kind of our past, present, and future. Well, this is the first time we've shot one on a campus, so history in the making. Thanks, man. All right, cool. Let's check it out. This is what I would call the 2014 Walk of Fame. These are all of our key highlight products that we rolled out over the course of this year. Over here you have the two chains, Too Good To Be True, Top 10, Jeremy Scott, Wing Shoe, and the Gold um, Execution, Keyshawn Johnson Trainer, the key trainer that we released earlier this year, one of the Matumbo colorways, a little bit of a history around Run DMC, Metro Attitude, Kareem, and then of course Stan Smith. So just kind of some of our more premium executions that we rolled out this year. And now through. So Wix, is this made of all shoelaces here? <laughs> yeah, this is a wonderful tapestry and it's made of all shoelaces. Um, the kind of stuff that just randomly appears in the hallways here, I'm always super, super into it. This is my sneaker collection, which basically starts in I'd say around 2000 when I started working for the brand in product and was in product marketing in an entry level position called Sweeper that doesn't even exist anymore. But more or less our job was to make sure samples were organized. We were running reports on sell through data, um, reporting that back as basically the hub of all information to the different parts of the brand, whether it was design, marketing, sales. And then transitioned into my current role now. So I have a bunch of um, product that we basically are responsible for seeding to uh, celebrities and influencers around the world. And so I have a variety of stuff from samples that have never been showed before to autograph stuff that I just get sentimental value from. And Wix, I'm seeing some, some McGrady's over there that I haven't seen before. So let's start with those. Sure. It's actually one of my first projects at Adidas. Uh, on day one, I was asked to risk buy 40,000 pairs of this Mad Handle shoe, which was Tracy McGrady's first shoe. Not a signature shoe, but the first shoe that we created just based on consumer need, materials, price point, and, and knowing that there was demand there. But it was before a time when our designers had a chance to sit with him and really take his influences and create stuff, which is, I think, what you were seeing over here that I could talk about in a second. Um, but Mad Handle was one of the very uh, biggest programs that we did that year based on just the, the amount of energy that Tracy had around 2000, 2001, when he was still playing with the Raptors. So I have an autographed version of that shoe, which was the, the black colorway that he wore uh, to kick off the season. Then we transitioned into his first signature shoe, which was when the market was really going towards that feather construction midsole. And this is the T-Mac 1, which you see the aggressive toe, uh, sort of squared toe, which indicates the era from which it was created. You know, taking those various market influences into effect. So when this shoe launched, it was like vapor in the marketplace. This shoe no one's ever seen before, or if you've seen it, you had access to a part of the brand that most people don't because we never made this shoe. The actual execution of this shoe, we used a colored toe wrap instead of this translucent midsole and outsole. I just kind of hung on to it because when we were in the room making that call about which version to go with, this was the one I wanted to go with. Uh, but, uh, you know, wiser people in the room chose to go with the, the other execution. And it too was vapor in the marketplace. We put, I want to say, 20,000 pairs in the market in February of that year when T Mac was in that All Star game. In addition to having players like that in our products, um, we also 
have great heritage in Adidas, so uh, as we talk about our brand, obviously we have to make a nod to uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This shoe um, was Kareem's first signature shoe. You see him, the sky hook on the tongue. There was another execution with his face on the tongue. Uh, this one's autographed by Kareem, which again, for sentimental value. Uh, this sample's from March of 2004. We did an execution with him uh, for All Star and for, for, for this year in, in 2014, uh, which we called The Blueprint. And the name The Blueprint actually came from, I believe it was Jeru Holiday. We were asking all of our players to tell us what they thought of Kareem's game. And I believe it was Jeru who said, he's the blueprint for all that came after him. And so we called it the blueprint. We made this amazing execution out of this Tyvek material. Um, we had wonderful marketing around it. And this shoe also is a very high demand product and sold very well. I think another really cool execution of a, of a heritage basketball model is the pro model. Um, this is an execution we did with Pistol Pete, um, but I love the, the, the vintage outsole, midsole execution on this shoe. Speaking to the performance attributes of the shoe, the original reason there's a shell toe on our products was because back then it was a pivot area and still kind of is, but we've just developed newer technologies to help players in that regard. Um, but it was there as originally as a, as a, as a performance enhancing attribute. Obviously everyone in our world knows them because of when Run DMC wore them on stage and, and told everyone in Madison Square Garden to raise their shoes above their head and made the shoe so famous through this song. But in actuality this thing is born from sport and I think that that's even why the guys like Run DMC would gravitated towards it because they knew at the time it was the most innovative technology in the marketplace and that was a sign of premium you know value. So whether you're an athlete or a, a rapper or a DJ or an artist you don't just live in that one isolated world. You see all the other influences that are taking place. We partnered with Rock Nation for their brunch, I wanna say a year or two ago. And the shoe that, that they picked out at Jay-Z's direction was the pro model to, to embellish with their logo and that they were gonna gift out to their artists. So their whole diverse portfolio of artists were all gifted this shoe at, at, at that Grammys from Haim to uh, Rita Ora and Rihanna. Jay-Z himself, etc. This is obviously autographed by Stan himself, but, but as, as you know, we've, we've advanced and updated this shoe a great deal this year, especially with the relaunch of it. While tennis looks have, have definitely gotten more prevalent, white leather, etc., as a result of this launch, um, we still have the ability to kind of trade off of that. For example, this is the collab that we have launching with Concepts, just really dope printed execution. The guys at Concepts and, and Jimmy Manley and our hype team and uh, Josh Herr uh, in design, they created a, a real banger here. While we're talking about innovation, let me talk to you about the MicroPacer because that was really uh, one of the, the greatest innovations of its time. When we relaunched Originals back in 2000, the MicroPacer was one of our key statement products. And this, as you can see, is, is numbered USA 553. Um, and we released 600 in each market around the world and numbered them and labeled them so that people who bought them in those parts of the world, whether you're in the UK, here, uh, Asia, Latin America, et cetera, would have that you know added value of making it meaningful. Um, things that are easy to get, not meaningful. When you wait in line for a shoe, like I did, because this came out before I actually worked here, um, and I actually bought this specifically because of the story behind it, uh, you know, it, it's something you hold on to. It had an odometer on it and a clock on it so that you could actually measure the distance you were running, which in 1984 was um, heralded as one of the greatest innovations of its time. So MicroPace is a shoe that we will constantly go back to. I mean, look at the beauty, of, the beauty in this execution. It's just perfect. We partnered with Packer Shoes on the EQT platform, again, paid homage to the MicroPacer. You see the MicroPacer upper inspiration on there. And then the 1984 Lace Jewel, which speaks again to that heritage. Obviously, you can't talk about Adidas without talking about the Superstar. But just going back to that sport heritage, even though um, people know it today for what we said earlier about Run DMC, the truth is, is that it was the first ev ever leather basketball shoe. So. At the time when it came out, from the shell toe innovation on the toe for the abrasion zones to the leather materials, that was considered a real statement above and beyond um, all other products. In 2005, we celebrated the, the 35th anniversary of the Superstar, and for that, we created 34 different collaborations, and then a 35th shoe that I'll show you in a second. The first 
package of those 34 different shoe collabs was called the Consortium Collection. The first executions of Consortium that we did were with Neighborhood, which aside from the chalky toe, which just happens over time, um, you still see the beauty and the execution and the simplicity of it with the black, white, and the different material, um, suede stripes with the leather upper. Foot Patrol. So you see the, the hands interweaving consortium logo that still stands to this day. DMOP. So at the time it was the top tier retailers from Asia, Europe, the US, etc. Union, Tate, which is another beautiful execution in this rich boot leather with the green suede and the, the chalked out vintage look. And then last but certainly not least, Undefeated with the snake execution and the undefeated logo. These I've actually worn a couple times, which is why they look a little more beat up than the other ones. But uh, yeah, like Clark Kent says, wear your shoes. Right. We also made a 35th iteration of the shoe and it was more or less impossible to get. And the reason why is because it was actually like a proper construction men's shoe, more so than a sneaker. So you see the different outsole execution here the actual like shoe construction to it. See the leather wrap on the, on the shell toe itself. And again, on that Superstar 80s, more sleek execution. This is a shoe that never made it to market, but this is one of the alternate executions that we did for Red Hot Chili Peppers. This is actually a note to Dean Lokes, who was the product manager on the project out of, out of Germany. And Flea wrote this saying how much he appreciated that we were doing it. Um, but they ultimately went with the other version of the sample we created, which was an, another excellent iteration. These here are Pharrell. Uh, he came in and, you know, obviously we have a great partnership with him. So he came through and uh, did a quick, quick, you know, autograph on those. Tell me, what's the most memorable project you've ever worked on in your time at Adidas? The greatest one I actually don't even have here. Uh, it was the Goodyear product that we made. The first ever iterations of those were called Monaco and Tuscany. The Monaco was the high top, the Tuscany was the low cut. It was just one of those situations where everyone kind of wanted to put their toe in the water, but we had to take a certain amount of risk to really see it through. And with the support of, of the team here and our senior management, we were able to, to take a position on the shoe that turned into a massive program, ultimately like 10 to 15% of our total originals business within two years of launching it. There's been a lot of amazing projects with like Big Sean. The three shoes that we made with him over the past three years have been incredible to work on. My team's role in it is to forge relationships with people that when the product team comes to us and says, hey, we have a collab we'd like to do to amplify it. Uh, to amplify a certain model, and then we bring in a partner for that. One of those examples would be the, the Snoop stuff in Adidas Football US and Adidas Originals. They had products that they felt were viable, but they felt like they needed a, a bit of additional uh, awareness created around them. And so we partnered with Snoop back in 2000. And I think these are from 2011, because these were for All Star LA the last time it was there. We also partnered with him on a, on a performance shoe as well. So it was a two shoe package with Snoop. Here, this was the first cleat ever sold at Undefeated. We launched, I want to say like 600 pairs of them with them earlier this year. The reason why we work with these people is because it's such an innovative business practice. Yes, we the brand has always embraced um, outspoken figures like Muhammad Ali and people who are, who are known for sort of moving the envelope with culture like Run DMC, Bob Marley, is just that element of innovation. You know, yes, the designs themselves and the partnerships themselves will be innovative, but also the way that we deliver those products and the way that consumers experience them. Um, I think you'll see some really great things coming from us over the next three or four months in that regard. We recently launched the ZX Flux, My ZX Flux photo app. Someone in Germany, his name is Till Jagla, thought of the idea for years, was trying to sell it internally and um, developed enough energy around it, momentum for his idea that, that the brand invested in it. And I gotta say, it is, I mean, this is the print quality. It's phenomenal. This is a picture I took just sitting of a bunch of backstage passes from projects that we've, you know, shows that we've thrown around the world. This shoe was definitely the most demand shoe that we created from our inline range in a long time. This is another sample that never got made, unfortunately. I love this colorway. But uh, this is something we made back in 2004, I wanna say, it's the ZX8000. When you look at the ZX8000, sorry, I'm gonna grab this, and the ZX Flux, you really start to see the, you know, the inspiration behind the midsole and outsole. 
and sort of where the cage comes from. You can, you can definitely gather that. And just the, a more modern sort of like chill zone type. You know, again, on that spirit of innovation tip, the, the greatest advancement in sneaker technology and in, in uh, energy uh, absorption, comfort, et cetera, is Boost. We launched this last year. Runner's World Magazine, not me, but Runner's World Magazine took a pair of our shoes that had over a thousand miles on them from a, a kid here named Aaron who runs a thousand miles every day. He sent them to Runner's World. They got box fresh pairs from all our competitors. And this was the highest rated shoe in terms of energy absorption and energy you know, output. When you talk about setting the bar high, um, this takes footwear into a whole new classification. And recently there was some interview with Kanye playing basketball in a pair of Pure Boosts while he was in Australia. He had told me that he was wearing those shoes to play ball in and I begged him not to because I, we have basketball product and stuff that's better for that category, obviously. Um, and his response to me was like, I, I can't take these shoes off my feet. The technology is just so amazing. They're so comfortable. And the reality is that every person that tries them on has the same thing to say about them. It's just the coziest, comfiest, best ride. It's like foot therapy. So here's two new uh, camel prints that are, that are hitting the market in November. This is the new materialization that will be coming on ZX Flux. We have it in a couple different base colorways so that it's not just the gray, black sort of shimmer. We made these for our 25th anniversary. Um, these are the samples from, yeah. 2007. The Forum is an amazing shoe for us in that this last shape inspired a whole family of shoes from a variety of different brands, including our own. Um, the strap on the shoe, this is actually the first basketball shoe for over $100. And this is Gem Master J's favorite shoe from Adidas, ironically. One of the retailers that we partnered with on that project was Harpitz. I wanted to bring them in because just shows the, the iconic nature of this shoe and how you can do it in different colors and materials to make it, you know, this was inspired off the Adidas shoe, the Americana, that was made out of that mesh material with the red, white, and blue stripes. Other cool stuff that we have worked on over the past few years, you know, Jeremy's constantly innovating on his stuff and, and when, you, when you take someone like Jeremy and, and ASAP and you put them together, you get greatness like that. Big Sean, for our very first collab with him, the product team, Maurice Menard's Latoya Kamara, uh, created a shoe that, that had that snakeskin pattern to it, the gold that Sean's known for, and the different, you know, the, the, the rings, the POW chains and all that. We tried to put a song lyric of his in every shoe, and the box for this shoe represented Detroit, and then for the next shoe, he wanted to, to make it a little more premium, and so he, he asked to remove the gold executions, but really layer up on the, on the material story. So this is the Big Sean Hall of Fame shoe. So it went from the Detroit player to the Hall of Fame. And then on this one, the quote is, nothing is stopping you, which you know is from the first song off his album, Hall of Fame, which by the way, that voice saying nothing is stopping you is actually Pharrell. And then um, most recently we launched the, the Attitude, Metro Attitude, which is inspired off, again, going back to that snake execution, but it's inspired off of um, the recording studio in Hawaii where he records a lot of his music, um, as with Kanye, uh, you know, as well, they, they like to go and get away from all the distractions and really just hole up in the studio. So when we went to relaunch the campus, we created these amazing seating kits, for lack of a better term. And we only made about five of them, but the five that we made that were in this colorway, I called Bun and asked him for his help in, in seating these. And Bun made sure that the people who received these kits were like authentic Texas icons. And then Matt Halfill, who had the exclusive on this colorway, actually was branding the shoes in his store. He was very instrumental in that as well. And then Clark Kent helped us to seed out these other versions of the shoes. So basically we took the, the campus that was going to be available at retail and, and created this sort of packaging around it that really helped it to, to sort of sort of be special to the people that receive them. And, uh, you know, our job is really forging these relationships with people and, and trying to um, create hype for our products. And sometimes the best way to do that is just to really just listen to the experts in the field and, and partner with them to, to um, make sure it gets out there the right way. But the most iconic partnership that, that really gave Adidas energy for the last 25 years is the Run DMC partnership. When I was in product in, two, in the early 2000s, a horrible thing happened with Jam Master J where he was murdered. And we worked with his mother and his family 
to um, produce this shoe, which was in honor of his life. We made a thousand pairs of them and we donated all the money to JMJ's family. You know, we'll never forget him and, and the contribution that he made to the culture, to our brand, and, and really music. We've continued that partnership with Jam Master J's family and the Scratch Foundation, where again, the portion of proceeds went to their, their family. This was the 25th anniversary superstar that we did with these guys. You see the, the Dubray at the, the Lace Jewel, 1986, Run DMC, Jam J on the heel. Again, working very closely with the family or, or with, with the guys in the band on this one. The team went over to Japan and I remember them coming back and telling me about it and being like, there's this retailer in, in Tokyo we got to work with. The kids line up for the store every time they release something. It's, it's, they flipped the business model from like mass consumption to really niche, but it's high demand. And so um, they introduced us to Bathe and Ape. And we, I believe, are the first sneaker brand to really partner with them on this type of level where we co-created the Super Ape star with them. You see the the way that the brand marks are kind of intertwined there. We created our own camo print with them. And then, you know, the vape guys are kind of known for their camo prints. So again, using that bathing ape inspiration on the camo. This is the vape B-side that we did with them a couple of years ago. Just really lush, proper, again, with that vape camo print insole. I will wear these someday, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I've been too busy beating up these ZX8000 Bapes. Um, you see I'm kind of more into the like running shoes, to be honest, in terms of wearing them around. Two different versions of the Campus. Uh, this is the one that I have, which you can see I also have beaten to shreds. By and large, I, I tend to gravitate toward the Bape stuff just because I, back when I was making shoes or was involved in product marketing, you know, there's a connection to it then. And then now it's just continued to gain momentum. And now Nego is a partner with us. Thank you, Paul Middleman, for making sure that Nego wanted to work with us still. You know, because that's like the first domino. It's like Paul invites Nego in, then Nego talks to Pharrell. And like, next thing you know, we've got all these amazing partners sort of as satellites for the brand that can help us to move the culture.